Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. Today we've got an extremely expensive video to cover, and basically the purpose of this video is going to help teach you guys how to create the helical ring that you pretty much see my character using. Now, to give an example of a helical ring, uh, this is currently one that's skinned, so I'll just wipe the Calandra's Touch skin off. Basically, if you look at helical rings, they are very endgame rings considering the bases are about like 35 divines but it's more about what you're able to do with them so typically in rf builds we like to use our accessories for chaos resistance you know minimum frenzy um usually i don't really anger essence which is the increased damage uh but dot multi is like the end game dot multi is crafted with delirium essences so usually i'll use that on amethyst rings and that's kind of my end game helical rings are one step above that because they allow you to focus on getting four suffixes with increased effect and only one prefix. The reason this is good is you don't care about prefixes with an RF build on a ring. The only two prefixes that are usable is life and increased damage from Leo. Increased damage in this instance gets outclassed by the fire damage roll we have. Now my helical ring does not have any quality on it, but to give an example of how strong it is, if you look at my chaos res, it says 94%. If I remove my helical ring, it goes to negative 52. So this one ring by itself is completely capping and over capping my chaos res in conjunction with a Calandra's touch, which at this state of the league, if I were to just price check it, a Calandra's touch is only like three divines, whereas a helical ring base is 30 something. So with that being said, I got a lot of questions about how you craft this. Let's jump on into it. It's very expensive and there's a lot to cover. So step one, you wanna buy your helical ring. Now the important thing is it depends on what type of role you're going for. Since I was looking for chaos resistance, what's important to see here is tier one chaos resist requires item level 81. You may as well just go for 84 because you can get like your top tier resistances as well. Always pay attention to item level when you're purchasing, especially when you're spending a crap ton of currency. Okay. Step two, let's go ahead and get to the next part. You want to fracture the damage over time multiplier. To do this, if you've been farming my Atlas with Harbinger, you'll probably have a bunch of fracturing orbs. These are called Essence of Delirium. Essence of Delirium is not to be confused with Essence of Horror that we use on the helmet. Delirium, if you read it, adds damage over time multiplier to rings. So now we're gonna attempt a self-fracture. So step one on your helical ring, is fishing for a 15% chance to, uh, sorry, 15% damage over time multiplier. So let's click. So we hit 22%, which is actually a perfect 15. So the next step is to make sure it has four modifiers because it can actually have five because it can have four suffixes and one prefix. If you happen to have more than four affixes, then you wanna go ahead and annul down to four. So that's where your orb of annul would be. You don't wanna keep removing it because a fracturing orb requires four modifiers. So now you pretty much go into the RNG of trying to attempt the self-fracture on the damage over time multiplier. If you fail, you can actually cleanse the fracture by wiping it off uh, with, a re with basically a vendor recipe, which I'll show when we fail this fracture. Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. Okay, so I'm not sure what's going on. I expected I was gonna fail, which is why I kept all of this stuff in my inventory here. In the instance that you fail, um, what you need to do is you need to get any tier of chaos resistance that is below, I believe it's I believe it's tier one and tier two, it's a little confusing for me. Um, before attempting the fracture, if you have a tier one chaos res roll or a tier two, I think my friend was telling me it's based off of the maximum uh, tier it can hit. So for example, since this is 84, it can hit tier one chaos res. If you have tier one chaos res, do not attempt a fracture because if you fracture the tier one chaos res, you cannot remove it because we're using a vendor recipe to cleanse it. Little complicated, I'm gonna try to explain here. So say I accidentally hit the fracture on the energy shield and I don't like that, right? That doesn't help me. So I'm gonna put it over here and I'm just gonna click reforge chaos one time. Remember, the reason for this is to get any form of Chaos Res. Now, unfortunately, I hit Tier 1 Chaos Res. It's not going to work with that, so I'm going to just re-roll that really fast. Uh, let's see. We hit Tier 3 Chaos Res. So now, with the Tier 3 Chaos Res, I should be able to take this ring, put it in the vendor with an Augmentation and an Amethyst Flask. And if you look, it is now wiping the Fracture off and increasing the Chaos Resistance. This is why this will not work with a higher tier chaos res mod because you cannot go above tier one. 
So pay attention to that, a little weird, sorry if I explained it poorly. This is basically what you're gonna do to wipe off the fracture. Remember, do not attempt the fracture if you have a top tier chaos res roll or if your ring is lower level and you can only hit tier two, then tier two is like your tier one. All right, now that that is completed, let's move on to the next stage. The next stage is going to be essence spamming. So I'm gonna go ahead and stash all of this. Okay, and my essence of choice that I like to use is anger essence. Thankfully, they're actually pretty cheap. They're about two chaos each. So compared to the ring base, it's nothing, right? So now I'm gonna pull out a bunch of these. Now, what I like to do whenever I am essence crafting on a fractured piece, regardless if it's a 35 divine base or a 50 chaos base, it's important to always think about this. What modifier are you trying to hit and what do you want to bench craft? So to understand what that means, we have a guaranteed 22% damage over time multiplier. We know we're adding fire damage. So we're looking for another modifier. In this instance, it will be tier one, tier two life, tier one chaos resistance, maybe dexterity, but that's kind of overkill because you're going to use two rings. And then you want to benchcraft something. Typically, I would say benchcraft life or benchcraft hybrid res. The life roll hits about 55, which is about the same as an unveil. Um, the hybrid res can be very good for players who need additional res for lightning coil, for example. So you could do lightning and chaos instead of my fire and chaos. With that being said, though, let's go ahead and jump into the next part. Now, I'm not going to like fully craft this because this is going to take like a while. I'm just going to kind of explain outcomes here. So let's go ahead and take a look. So there is a 51% fire damage roll. Uh, remember, we're going to get the guaranteed fire roll every single time because that's what the anger essences do. Right. So we're just going to click this some more. What do we hit here? Fire damage, so nothing really good. That hit a mono roll, we don't really care about that. So one other nice thing about this is since we're so deep into currency with a helical ring, if you get some decent odds, like let's use an example, say you get a tier one life roll and you know you have that guaranteed fire damage roll, but you have two bad suffixes, I don't think there's anything wrong with playing around with like annul orbs. Annuls are very cheap in the current market. They're like literally three chaos right? Maybe a little bit more, I guess, if you buy in bulk. The other thing is um, there are bestiary recipes here for people who want a little bit extra. So there's prefix to suffix, which is add a suffix, remove a random prefix. So maybe, for example, you hit tier one chaos resistance and you just want to gamble a little bit more. These don't cost that much. They're probably like less than five to ten chaos. So you can just prefix to suffix. Vice versa, you can also suffix to prefix. So there's Cool things that you can kind of do. I think I did those backwards, but yeah, you get the point. There's a lot of cool things you can mess around with while you're in the crafting process. Alternatively, you can just spam your essences. They're very cheap, so it's kind of up to you how you want to go about doing this. So there, for example, I hit a tier one life roll, right? That tier one life roll is pretty sick. So me personally, I'm just going to annul and see if I can get lucky here. One nice thing you can also do this is much more expensive. You can actually Veiled Chaos when you have a very usable outcome. Remember that Veiled Chaos, what it's going to do is it's going to remove a modifier and add a modifier, right? So the best way to go about doing this is you need to have an open modifier first, and then you could craft something. So say I want to protect that life roll no matter what, right? Because I want to protect that life roll, I would annul, hope it hits lightning damage or accuracy. So let's go ahead and annul real fast. Hi, I'm Mark Roberts, game director on Path of Exile. Okay, so that's brick now in that instance. We lost the anger roll. But say we didn't lose the anger roll and we removed the lightning, we could do prefixes cannot be changed, which is a suffix, right? And then we could actually veiled chaos, but... This is a gamble that I personally don't know if I would attempt because the Veiled Chaos is probably like eight to nine divines. And then this is another two divines and it would have to hit the accuracy or the lightning damage. Remember, one of those hypothetically would be annulled and then you craft the last modifier. I don't really think you want to gamble 10 divines with a bad modifier, but it really depends on what you want. My personal recommendation is you just unethically spam your deafening essence of anger because they're not that expensive. This is what I ended up doing. I used maybe like 200 essences. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit more. Go a little bit more to show you guys some decent outcomes just so you can see. So nothing very good there. Fire damage, mono regen. Tier 5 life. 
Okay, tier three life is actually kind of okay. It's not amazing, but it's, you know, I think it's worth gambling. So in the gamble here, I don't really like the intelligence roll. So I think I would annul and then like double exalt slam. So we're just gonna annul and it, we'll see you later. Okay, fire damage accuracy, fire damage dex, intelligence. Mana fire res, no thanks. There's like a tier three chaos res, but tier three is like, tier three is not super amazing, but, but hear me out. If I annul the lightning res, okay, okay, that didn't work. I was going to say, if I annul the lightning res, you could craft life and then re-exalt slam and it's like decent and it would be okay. There's a tier one chaos res. Okay. So here we have an interesting option. So in the choice like this right here. What you could do here, because you have a T1 Chaos Res, if Veiled Chaos is a gamble, but if you Veiled Chaos and it hits the Elemental Res, you have an Unveiled Suffix that would probably be like Fire and Chaos Res, Lightning and Chaos Res. Th those two are totally fine, right? You could also hit a Prefix, in which case you Unveil Life, but then you're still gambling. But then if it removed, for example, say it removed the Elemental Res in favor of a Prefix, you would literally have My Ring. It's tier one chaos res with an unveiled life roll, and then you craft the last res. So it would actually like quite literally be the ring that I have. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Um, I guess in this instance, I'm gonna just, I'm kind of lazy, so I'm kind of gonna just annul. I don't know if this is the play here, but we're just doing it anyway. So I'm gonna just casually annul the uh, elemental res. Okay, it's 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 bricked, it didn't, it didn't work. <laughs> oh yeah, anyway. You get the idea with the helical ring crafting. Hopefully the, the few examples kind of helped you guys out. One of the last things I'd probably say is you probably want to catalyst before you get to this point. So what I mean by that is if I were to just scour this, right? When it is blue like this, you can actually catalyst it. Uh, it'll take 10 catalysts instead of 20 when it's rare. I don't really know what I want. I was going to put resistance catalyst, but it's already over capping me on res. So I don't know if I just put Fertile Catalyst for a little bit more life. I think that's probably the play for me. Otherwise, you can do Elemental Catalyst for a little bit more Ellie damage. It kind of sucks because the damage over time multiplier is not Elemental, so it doesn't get scaled as well. Anyway, I hope that the video helped you guys out. Please let me know in the comments below what other videos you guys want. I'm kind of running out of content a little bit here. I want to go back to helping newer players out. I can't believe I also spent so much damn currency thinking I was going to fail over and over, and this streamer RNG just doesn't stop, man. So, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox, except for Sundays. Catch you guys all later. Thanks for watching.